Kwan is 82 years old. I believe uh, art, art and traveling keeps him very young. Keeps him very agile. Don't you agree? Yeah. Give him a round of applause. Five more years, 87. Stop, stop, sorry. You'll be here. <laughs> You'll see him here. Mr. Gobin Kwan is a traveller. This few generation of Chinese in this part of the world are travellers. They've been emigrating. Ben Kwan's uh, father, who have travelled from China to Indonesia, he was born in Madan, but he still stayed on in Madan. He moved. The family moved to Singapore in 1945. Now, I share a few things with Mr. Gobing Kwan. Uh, I'm only 51. All right? uh, but I've known him for more than 40 years. Uh, again, just because of Uncle Kusuho. They were very good friends. Um, we used to, my family, my late father, uh, my family travel a fair bit in this region and we always visited Suiho, visited, and he introduced us to Beng Kwan. He, I knew him in the 70s uh, before uh, my teenage years. Uh, that long I knew him. Uh, I remember Sui Ho and my father was uh, uh, commenting on Bing Kwan's name because he, the family moved from Indonesia to Singapore. It took him some years, I think, to get his citizenship. So they used to make fun of him. And his Chinese name is very appropriate. Wu Ming Quan, no citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, he finally became a Singaporean. The other thing is that uh, I, I was studying in Singapore. I did my A levels in Hua Chong Junior College, Hua Chu, uh, Hua Chong Chu Chi Xue Yan. And Big One is from Hua Chong. That's my, uh, we share the same alma mater. Hua Chong and Hua Chu has uh, become one. Uh, under what we call now Hua Chong Institution. So we share something in common as well. So Bing Kwan is a traveller. Um, in Hua Chong, right, or we call Chinese High in Singapore, he had good mentors like Chen Wen Xi and Zhong Si Ping. They were teaching at Nafa, but they were also teaching in Hua Chong. Hua Chong was a very important uh, Chinese high school, very much like Chongling in Penang. Uh, we had pioneer, Malaysian pioneer artists teaching in Chongling. Right? Many of the senior artists now say they were inspired by their teacher in their high school, just like Beng Kwan said just now, that he was mentored and inspired by a very important artists, the Nanyang movement uh, uh, creators like Chen Wen Si and Chung Si Ping. And I think the Nanyang style basically is a style of traveling artists, the artists who have moved from their homeland and uh, moved to a new space, a new place which they call home and they were seeking their identity. They were looking, they were considering who they are. And this, uh, this group of Chinese artists who ended up in Malaya, particularly Singapore, came together, sought their identity, and they started the Nanyang style, the South Sea style. South Sea style is not just a Chinese style, it is a combination of Western art and Oriental art with the local element. Right, very much you see postmodernism, Taoism, and the Chinese art element in Nanyang style, and that influenced Bing Kwan. 
And eventually, Ben Kwan went to New York. He joined the Art Students League of New York. Uh, just now we saw a video, actually, wonderfully done video. It said a lot of things. Um, in, you saw the photo of uh, Sidney Gross, which Ben Kwan said that uh, influenced him much. I think that's where he was exposed. He was exposed to expressionism, abstract expressionism. New York was an exciting place. Uh, he then joined the Provincetown Workshop, helmed them by Liu Menso and Victor Kendall. And again, these are people who have influenced him greatly. Uh, they introduced him to collage, right? Collage, very much like. Uh, uh, Ericwa, Ericwa spent some time in New York. He was he also picked up his his uh, love for collage, uh, and then he developed the collage uh, all from New York. A very exciting place. That was the replacement of Paris, right? Uh, then in the sixties. Now, collage. Collage is the idea of using found objects, other materials, adding it to. Uh, on your canvas or your paperwork. Bing Kwan's collage is wonderful, I love it. And you look at the this one. This one is downstairs, right, in the restaurant space. A huge work, a seven foot by seven foot work, uh, which is collage. And his collage, although he learned it from New York, had very strong, I call it, Eastern element. Whether it's collage or his other work. All right? Uh, very expressive. <laughs> abstract, we may call it. Uh, but they have that unmistakable Chinese art influence of the lines. All right? Whether they are made of uh, Chinese thing or, or other materials, you will see those lines very strongly presented in this work. And Bing Kwan, I had the privilege of reading the book uh, Vincent had given me before this opening. And uh, he mentioned that Liu Menso was the one who liberated him. I think he went to New York feeling that uh, he has to find the cutting edge of art in the West. And he was very much trying to put aside his oriental roots. But Liu Menso told him, don't do that. You don't have to do that. Your Chineseness, your Orientalness is in you. You are so influenced all right, by your culture. That is your strength. You don't have to put that aside. And that liberated him. And that formed his styles that he went forward with. All right? Very universal in approach. You have the Western art influence with his very strong Chinese cultural roots. And the other wonderful thing about Bing Kwan is that he travels a lot, right? That is why I, I don't think he... That, that is why he used the excuse that he's bringing his book launch from Singapore to <laughs> Malaysia, <laughs> to Thailand, and to China. No, he, he's actually very kind, wanting to save his friends the traveling time, but at the same time he gets to travel, which he loves. And when he travels, when he he produces art when he travels, and when he travels, he collects materials, his collage materials, and then he, he can then incorporate the local culture into his art, whether it's Malay, Thai, right, or any part of the world. Look, Bing Wan is wearing himself today. He is wearing what he usually wears, right, a, what I call a multi-pocketed hunting vest, or you can call a fisherman's vest, right? and many pockets. Uh, those are not for show, you know. He, he's, he has his traveling studio with him. With that comes wonderful things, wonderful art. At any one time, at any place, he can create his art coming out with his things from his pockets. Right? And that very much has been fun. I think that is what keeping him so young, keeping him so interesting. So I congratulate him for uh, this wonderful book. Uh, this, he's told me that this is his first book 
the first book that he is quite happy with, all right, a substantial book. It was subsidized by the Singapore Arts Council. Uh, it was also sponsored by the Singapore National Gallery. Uh, he had a show accompanying that book launch in Singapore, a completely different one from this one in Penang. So we are privileged to see his many work and we, I really thank uh, Daichi for bringing uh, this wonderful event to Penang, uh, his book launch and his, his, his art. Jatin uh, was saying that, uh, hey, what you are wearing sarong, <laughs> looking at the last photo of his in the video. That was a wonderful photo. Um, that was, it depends, but a very colourful one. I think very much because of his Nyonya roots. <laughs> a very beautiful one. So, grazing, grief, no, cresting the waves. Cresting the waves is a long overdue and long awaited publication that has finally come to fruition. And I think it is a very, very valuable uh, compendium all right, uh, of articles and his artwork. Um, I am very uh, passionate about this area. Why? I, I keep saying, why is Western art so looked up upon, so sought after, so valuable? I think one of the reasons is because the West talk incessantly about their art. They write incessantly about their art. And we don't have enough of that here. We need more people to write about art in all languages. Right? We need more. I say that you need quantity. Don't worry about quality. Once you have the quantity and the number of people writing, quality will come. So I urge I urge everyone here, I see a number of writers here, you are the few who write about art in Malaysia and we need more of you. And Mingguan, your publication uh, give us this encouragement, all right? That proper art publication can be done, should be done, and we should do much, much more of it. So I'm very glad uh, for you to take the lead to show us what can be done. So. I thank Laichi, I think Bing Kwan, Natu Tai, Atin for allowing me to, uh, to, to share the joy of officiating this solo exhibition and launching the book. Thank you.